Bursa Malaysia has uplifted the Practice Note 17 status on Air Asia X after the airline managed to comply with the criteria for the waiver and upliftment from being classified as a PN17 company. According to the boss filing, the group said that the upliftment will come into force from the start of trade on Wednesday, November 22, 2023. Bursa Malaysia also highlighted that AAX no longer triggers any prescribed criteria under paragraph 2.1 of PN17 of the list requirements. Meanwhile, AAX saw its net profit for the third quarter decline by 78% year-on-year to 5.56 million compared to 25.09 million in the same period last year as a result of higher fuel expenses and maintenance and overhaul costs. In contrast, quarterly revenue surged almost six-fold to 648.4 million on the back of recovery in international travel as well as the increase in available seat capacity. On a quarter-on-quarter basis, net profit was fairly flat at 5. 54 million reported in the second quarter, while revenue improved from 512.9 million ringgit. As for outlook, AAX says that it expects to maintain the momentum when it comes to fleet recovery. It currently operates 14 aircraft out of its 17 aircraft fleet and is expecting to add one more, bringing its total fleet size to 18 aircraft. Of that, the group expects at least 16 aircraft to be operational by December 2023. AAX says that it is keeping to its course by relaunching its key profitable routes while maintaining its focus on potentials in China as the country's international travel traffic recovers. Aside from that, the airline notes its recent announcement that it will soon service Almaty, Kazakhstan, which it calls a fresh and strategic route for AAX to expand its reach to other regions of the world. Star Media Group's net profit for the third quarter fell 97.5% year-on-year to 56,000 from 2.2 million a year ago as earnings were once again affected by high operating costs. Quarterly revenue was flat at 54.93 million against 54.43 million reported in the previous year. On a quarter-on-quarter basis, the group's net profit was 92.92% lower compared with 791,000 in the second quarter of FY 2023, while revenue fell 5.34% from 58.02 million due to lower revenue from the print, digital and event segment and the radio broadcasting segment. Moving forward, the publisher of the nation's largest English language newspaper said it would continue with its prudent management strategy while focusing on revenue enhancement initiatives and operational efficiency improvements amid global inflation. The group said that as market conditions remain challenging, which resulted in contraction of industry revenue, the group continues to sustain its revenue and overall financial performance while remaining financially prudent. Kajaya Prospect Group's 404.35 million job from BCM Holdings, a subsidiary of EcoFirst Consolidated, to build a main residential building has fallen through after BCM decided to not proceed with the contract previously agreed upon between both parties. Kajaya Prospect said it will be taking necessary steps under the letter of award after advice from its solicitors to enforce its right to recover the pre-agreed damages payable stated in the LOA, which is due and payable by BCM to its wholly owned subsidiary, Kerjaya Prospect Malaysia. At a media briefing, Chairman Datuk T. Eng Ho said the group has not mobilised any resources for this contract. When asked whether there was any dispute that led to BCM to call an end to the contract, T. said he was not in a position to comment as it was not related to Kerjaya Prospect. Losing the contract reduces Kerjaya Prospect's outstanding order book from $4.7 billion to about $4.3 billion, while jobs replenishment year-to-date will drop. From 1.6 billion to about 1.2 billion, which T emphasized is still within management's target of 1.2 billion this year. For 2024, T said Kajaya Prospect is eyeing new jobs of about 1.5 billion and trying to secure contracts to build data centers. For its third quarter, the group saw its net profit improve 24% year on year to 35.57 million, mainly due to improved progress of construction work activities. Revenue rose 40% from a year ago to 362.2 million as the group declared an interim dividend of 2 cent per share.
Megafus Corp is increasing its shareholding in the 260 megawatt Don Sahong hydropower project in Laos from 80% currently to 91.25% through a 85 million US dollar transaction. The deal involves Megafus 56.25% owned unit Mega Ventures buying 20% stake in Don Sahong Power Co from EDL Generation Public Co for 85 million US dollars. The remaining shareholders in MVL are Laos Incorporated Lao Green Power Corp Co and BVI Incorporated NMX Trading. In a boss filing, Megafirst said the proposed acquisition will enable it to increase its shareholding in a proven and profitable renewable energy asset. Don Sahong Hydropower Plant commenced operations in January 2020 and generates approximately 2,028 GWH per year. The project is operating under a 25-year concession whereby electricity generated by the hydropower plant will be sold to Electricity du Laos Laos under a power purchase agreement. The deal is expected to be completed by end December and is not subject to the approval of any regulatory authority and or shareholders. DC Healthcare Holdings is proposing to acquire aesthetic medical clinic operator Ibella for $70 million in cash and new shares at $0.58 cent apiece. The company is proposing to pay $35 million cash for the acquisition, while the remaining $35 million will be satisfied via a total of 60.34 million new shares, representing 5.71% of its enlarged share capital post-exercise. Concurrently, DC Healthcare has proposed a 144 bonus issue of warrants with a five-year tenure and exercise price to be determined later. The share's consideration for Ibella's acquisition is not entitled to the free warrants according to DC Healthcare. DC Healthcare said it intends to use 15 million of its remaining initial public offering proceeds from back in July to partly fund the cash position of the acquisition. Ibella, which has two clinics in Sri Pataling and Setia Alam, is currently renovating a clinic in Taman Molet, Johor. For its FY 2023, Ibella's PAT grew 133% year-on-year to 2.93 million, while revenue grew 32% to 11.85 million ringgit. Shares in DC Healthcare have climbed around 25% since its listing and ended Tuesday down 1.96% at 50 cents.